Day 249. Today we'll focus on eastern Ukraine. In the Luhansk region, the Ukrainians have launched a series of attacks. Most of the lines of attack were opened in the northern part of the region, so in the area where the Ukrainians are planning to make a breakthrough. Russian sources reported that the primary goal of the Ukrainian northern group is to move towards Nizhnya Dovanka. This is indeed a very important town because it is located at the intersection of three rivers that split this town into four parts. By establishing control over each part of the town and the surrounding area, the Ukrainians will not only cut off all supplies to Svatova from the north, but they will also be able to hit Svatova from the back, or at least establish fire control over the region and significantly reduce Russian supply possibilities. In order to achieve these goals, the Ukrainians are storming Pershotravneve, Orlanske, the Kislivka agglomeration and Kuzemivka. The toughest fights are taking place around the Kislivka agglomeration. The Russians here are in a salient, so the Ukrainians can attack them from three directions. But because the Ukrainians have not breached Russian defensive positions in Orlanske, the Russians in Kislivka continue to hold solid defense. In the southern part of the region, the Ukrainians continued assaults in the direction of Ploshanka and Chervonopopivka, which means that the Ukrainians have cut off the Svatova Kremina road and do not allow the Russians to use it for transporting ammunition and reinforcing the region. It was officially announced yesterday, and many of you asked me why I did not cover this news yesterday. But it is actually because I brought this news to you even one day prior to the officials, because it was apparent from the situation on the front. In the upper Donetsk region, after the Ukrainians conducted a counterattack to the south and east of Bakhmut, the Russians switched their focus and started to once again push heavily to the north of Bakhmut. At first they tried to develop their offensive in the direction of Krasnohora. By achieving success here, the Russians would be able to cut off the connection between Bakhmut and Solodar and severely disrupt Ukrainian logistics. One of the key advantages the Ukrainians here have is their highly efficient logistics. They can quickly move their forces between Siversk, Slovyansk and Bakhmut. However, because the Ukrainians are still controlling the village called Bakhmutske, which is located between Solodar and Pokrovske, the Russians suffered high losses and could not establish positions in Krasnohora. That is why they started assaulting this village from several sides at once. The fights here are still taking place. In the central part of the Donetsk region, heavy fights are taking place on the Ukrainian secondary defense line that goes through Vodyane and Opetne. Some sources report that the Ukrainians have conducted several counterattacks and significantly increased the intensity of artillery fire on the newly captured Russian positions in Vodyane. Russian sources report that they managed to cross the river and capture the northeastern part of Vodyane, while Ukrainian sources claim that the Ukrainians still need to cross the river. There was some footage of several Ukrainian tanks moving from Severne to Vodyane. Russian sources claim that this was a counterattack on the northern part that is allegedly under their control, however, judging by the fact that it was just several armored vehicles, it looks like it was just a reinforcement, and the Ukrainians are still holding their positions. Simultaneously, the Russians are trying to develop their offensive in Pervomaiske, but they face significant challenges because this village is very narrow and the Ukrainians fire at Russians from three sides – Nevelske, Pervomaiske and Vodyane. Lastly, in the southern part of the Donetsk region, the Russians launched an offensive operation towards Pavlivka. Pavlivka is a significant barrier on their way to storm Vuhledar. The Russians failed to take Vuhledar several times when it was almost completely surrounded, so these additional areas under Ukrainian control not only reduced Russian chances of achieving tactical success, but also boosted Ukrainian logistics. With Pavlivka under total Ukrainian control, the Ukrainians open access to several more roads for supplies and support that are actually much safer. That is why the Russians finally decided to launch their attack here. They started with an extensive artillery preparation that was followed by attack from multiple sides. But at the end of the day, the Ukrainians are still controlling this settlement while reinforcements are already on the way. Overall, the Ukrainians are pushing the Russians in the Luhansk region while the Russians are pushing the Ukrainians in the Donetsk region. This is an attempt by the Russians to force the Ukrainians to relocate their troops back to the Donetsk front and stop their offensive operation. The Russians are trying to impose the rules of the game and regain the initiative. 
Nonetheless, the Ukrainians stick to the plan and successfully hold off Russian advances. The Ukrainians managed to cut off the most important supply road on the Svatova front. It seems like they managed to retain control over the northern part of Vodyane, which is extremely important, and they managed to maintain control over Pavlivka. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.